In this series of videos, I want to show you how to create your own invoicing system. I'll start off by describing how to create the invoice itself in terms of formatting and structure. Also how to keep a customer database and how to keep a record of invoices. And you'll see here that wherever we have an invoice that's overdue, it appears in red. But if we say it's paid, then the red background disappears. So it's a good way of tracking your invoices. You can also see over here when the invoice was emailed and you've got a link to the invoices as well, so you can view them. Now in other videos, I will also go through these macros that I've created. You've got a macro that will save the invoice as an Excel file, a macro that will save it as a PDF file, a macro that will automatically email the invoice to the customer. A macro that will add the invoice to the record of invoices. And the last macro here will clear the current invoice so that you can start a brand new invoice. And it will also automatically generate the next invoice number for you. If you want to learn how to create this invoice from beginning to end, including all the macros run by these buttons, then follow the link in the description of this video to the playlist that contains all the videos in this series. Okay, in this video, we're gonna look at this Start New Invoice button. I've got an invoice completed over here. If I click on this Start New Invoice button, it clears the invoice of its items and also of its address. There's a few things that stay in here, like the date, which might be relevant to the next invoice, but it's also cleared the PO number. Having pressed the button, I get this little message box that tells me what my next invoice number will be. When I click on OK, it updates the invoice number and also it saves the invoice template. OK, let's see how we can create this button. So this is as far as we got in our last video. Now we're going to have to write a little macro for this button. In order to do that, it's a good idea to have the developer tab on your ribbon. If you can't see it, right click on another tab that you can see, customize the ribbon, and just make sure developer is ticked there. Click on OK. Then on the developer tab, click on your Visual Basic button. So that'll open up the Visual Basic editor. And if you've been following along this series of videos, you'll already have this macro for the record of invoices haven't got that macro and you've not been following along we've already created a module so you need to go to insert module to do that and we're going to start a new macro so i'll give myself a little bit of space at the top and i'll write sub create new invoice open bracket close bracket press enter you'll get an end sub line and i'll just create some space for myself i'll close down this project explorer move this over a little bit so we can also see our invoice. There's three things I'm really doing here. I need to increment the invoice number. I need to clear certain parts of the template and I also need to save the template. First of all, let's concentrate on changing the invoice number. I'm going to declare a variable for that invoice number as long. So I'm going to store the value in C3 in this variable. Just to save confusion, it looks as though the invoice number is in D3, but these cells are merged. So the value is actually in C3. You can see that in the name box. So invoice number equals range C3. So now I've stored that invoice value in this variable. The next thing I actually want to do on the sheet is clear certain parts of it. For example, the PO number, the invoice address, and any values in this table down here. So I can say range, start with PO number. Now the PO number, as I've just said, is in a merge field. So I have to reference both of those cells. So that's C4 colon D4 comma. I'm also going to clear B10 where we have the customer name. I'm not going to clear the address. You'll see why in a moment. And then I want to clear 
the invoice items table. So that's B19 colon G35. Close my quotation marks, close the bracket, and I'm going to use the clear contents method. Once I've cleared the contents, I need that little message box that tells me what my next invoice number will be. So message box, your next invoice number is space quotation marks ampersand. I'm going to concatenate that text with invoice number plus one, which will increment the invoice number. So now I need to update the invoice number in cell C3. So I say range C3 equals invoice number plus one. Now I've changed that invoice number. I'm going to select range B10. And that means that once the macro is finished, the user will be in cell B10, so they can easily choose a new customer for the next invoice. And then I'm going to save this workbook. Okay, let's see if the macro does in fact work. I play it. You can see I get your next invoice number is 1001. If I click on OK, it changes the invoice. Now we've got a bit of a problem here because although we've cleared the customer name, we've not cleared these formulas below. We wouldn't want to clear them. We want to keep them in the invoice. So to solve this, I'm going to put this VLOOKUP formula within the IFNA function and specify that I want to return an empty text string instead of an NA error. So if I copy this down, the only thing I do need to do is change the col index number so it picks up the right column. So that would be three, four, five, six, and seven. And then if I pick a customer, it gives all the address details. Okay, let's create a button for this macro. So I'll go to the Developer tab, go to the Insert menu, under Form Controls, go to the Button button, draw your button. Choose the correct macro, Create New Invoice. Click on OK. Change the text in the button. So if you click into the button, you can delete what's currently there. Create New Invoice. Format the button, click outside it, right click on it, format control. Alignment will say is left. Margins will have a 0.5 margin on the left side. And then we'll put a little icon in the button. So I'm going to go to insert illustrations icons. I'll type document. That one to do. Change the height of that to 0.85. Drag it into position. Now I want to group the icon and the button. Icon is already selected. I'm going to hold down Shift and right click on the button. That will also select the button. Then on the Shape Format tab, I'm going to go to Group and Group, and that groups the button and the icon. So if I right clicked on the button and then moved the button, the icon moves with it. So let's see if this works. If I put a PO number in, already got an invoice address, some stuff, quantity 100, price 899. That's my invoice. I'd probably add it to the record first. And then I'd want to create a new invoice. So I'd want to clear the existing data. Your next invoice is 1002. It's cleared the invoice and I'm ready to go for my next invoice and a new customer. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next video.